What's up, sports designers? Mike with Sports Templates here, and I am super pumped to show you this awesome new After Effects animated helmet template. Yep, that's what I said. Animated helmet template from Sports Templates. I'm going to show it to you today the first ever animated equipment mock-up from Sports Templates, and I'm going to show you how to take this After Effects template and make this awesome animated Tiger's design. And you're going to see it loop once, and I'm even going to show you how to make it a repeating loop. So let's get into it. Um, I'm going to show you everything you get with this package. Before I do, you know the drill. Just take a second, head down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons for us. Also check out the description. You'll find some useful information in there, including a link to the asset library that you can use for this design. So make sure to go down there and check that out. Okay, so before we get into actually editing, let me show you everything you get with the package, or at least tell you about it. So for this package, you're gonna get an After Effects file with three different sized compositions, square, HD, and story size. So right now we're looking at the square view. You can see them up here in the resolutions folder again. We've got the square view here. We've also got the HD view, which is like a widescreen, good for YouTube uh, type presentations, landscape presentations. And we've got story mode, good for phone presentations, TikTok, Instagram, social media, all that kind of stuff. They're all already connected. So if you make a change up here or in the linked Photoshop file, these will all be changed simultaneously. So it's the same information just presented in a different view. You're actually gonna get two. You're gonna get one that's in the 1K resolution. So you're starting with a 1080 by 1080. Uh, base, which is what we're looking at here. You're also going to get one that's a 2K resolution if you want to do more high resolution renders. It does take a little bit more power to render out at that size, um, and the 1K resolution should work fine for all of your social media applications and video applications that you may want to use. But we wanted to include both just in case anybody wanted like a really high resolution. So you're going to get that. You're also going to get a PSD. There's a Photoshop template that is linked to this. So, and you need that template in order to place some of the logos and do some of the other things. We can do a lot of editing directly in After Effects. I'm going to show you how to do that. But we do need to use a Photoshop template to do some of it as well, which I know a lot of you are used to. The good news is if you've never used After Effects, this is going to be a nice introductory tutorial for you. Uh, to be able to do some things with this setup that we have to make it really easy for you to edit the helmet and get a nice animation out of it. Um, so included with that, when you when you download the files, you're going to get the two After Effects uh, folder or files that I told you about. You're going to get the Photoshop template. We're going to get a you're going to get an Assets folder um, that has lots and lots of files in it that are all needed in order to make this whole thing work with the animation and the connection between. Photoshop and After Effects. You're not going to do anything with those assets, but you need to have the file and you need to have all these files downloaded in the same location. There's also a plugin that's needed and we're going to show you how to install that plugin. It's a UV uh, plugin that makes some of this animation and lighting kind of stuff work. So we're going to show you all that stuff and it's going to be really easy for you. Um, again, I'll show you how to download everything and make that work and um, there's also another part I'm going to show you how to do the plugin install for um, PC and in a little bit I'm going to pass it over to Ollie and he's going to show you how to do it for Mac because he's a, a Mac user and I'm not um, so I just wanted to go over all that stuff and then we'll get into start showing you what you're actually going to get with this package. So when you download the file, you're going to get some zip folders. And within each one, this is the 1K that I'm gonna show you. So within each one, you're gonna see this UV Pass plugin. That's the plugin we need to install before we do anything to make this work. Also inside this other folder, you'll see all the other stuff you need. You, your assets folder that I told you about, Here's your PSD, and its name is Add Your Design here. That's important. We'll go over that. And here's your animated helmet. This is the 1K version for After Effects. Now, I took all of these, and I just copied them out into my Downloads folder. As long as they're all together in the same location, then everything will work the way it's supposed to. 
Okay, so let me show you how to install the UV Pass plugin for PC, and then we'll show you how to do Mac in just a minute. So once you've downloaded the folder, there's going to be a another folder inside there with the UV Pass plugin, and I've I've moved mine over here to my downloads. If you open that up, and then open that. There's Mac and Windows. There's some instructions for how to install plugins if you need them, or you can just refer to this video. So I'm gonna open the Windows folder and I can see the plugin there. Now I'm gonna open another Windows Explorer and I'm just gonna to go to my C drive, program files, Adobe, and then whichever version of After Effects you're using, I've got both installed for 2022 and 2023. So I'm gonna to go to the 2023 folder. I'm gonna to go to support files. I'm going to scroll down and go to plugins and then you can see it's here so if you're installing you would just drag this over here and drop it no I've already got it installed so I'm not going to do that again but that's as easy as it is and I'm just going to quickly pass it over to Ollie to show you how to do this so here comes Ollie in three two one hey Ali here taking over from Mike to show you how to do this on the Mac and to do it on the Mac you're going to get uh, after you download uh, the FTU pass, FTU V pass uh, plugin. You can just uh, double click on it. It's gonna extract. Once you open that file, that folder, there's two options. There's one for Windows and one for Mac. You go into the Mac one, and then you copy uh, this FTU V pass 64 dot plugin, and then you can go to Applications. So inside of applications you just you just need to search for after effects uh you can double click on it and inside of after effects you can just go into the plugins folder double click on it you just click command v to paste that plugin it's going to ask for your password okay and it's going to place it in here now, if you have uh, a MacBook that's running an M1 or M2 Apple Silicone, uh, you just need, before you start After Effects, you need to uh, right click on it and get info. And in here, you need to make sure that you have open using Rosetta. So this is needed for the plugin to work uh, because it's not optimized for M1 uh, Silicone. So the trade-off is this will make your render times slower, but the file, the, the 3D, uh, the 3D graphics wrapping will work inside of After Effects. So once we make sure that using Open Rosetta is activated, we can go back to our folder. And now, if you open it up, you're gonna get this message that's saying you open it up in Rosetta, but you can see that uh, all the textures are loaded up and it's ready to go. Now back to Mike to continue with this tutorial. Okay, so thank you for that, Ollie. Uh, really helpful with installing the UV Pass plugin on Mac. So now that we have that plugin installed, we are ready to start editing. So let me show you how to do all of that. So we want to make sure we have our After Effects file open. And this is the one we have here, the 1K version. So the file name is Animated Helmet 1K. We want to make sure you have your Photoshop file open, which is this file here. And it needs to be named Add Your Design Here. So that is what makes the linkage work between Photoshop and After Effects. It's part of what makes the linkage work. So we need to have that file open and named add your design here and you need to make sure that the two files the after effects file the photoshop file are in the same location as the assets folder that we looked at earlier that we see here right so we've got the assets folder animated helmet 1k add your design here all in the same location i've got them in my downloads folder you might have them somewhere else but that's where they are for me and that's gonna make them work all being together. So let's talk about how we edit things. If we're back in After Effects, we've got our resolution here, our, our, our first composition, I should say here, square layout. Let's look at how we see the others. So when this opens up, you should have 
this project area load up over here and there's this resolutions folder. I've got it open, you can just open it like that. And I've got square here. And if you double click each one, it will load up. So here's our HD, right? Kind of a widescreen YouTube size layout. And then I've also already loaded up the story one down here. And I've got these panned to different locations, right? These are all, these are all linked. So if you make a change in any of them, it changes in the others. So let's go in here. Uh, this is the essential graphics window and you're gonna need this to make your edits. So if you don't have this, go up here to window, turn on essential graphics. Also turn on libraries while you're there and that will enable you to see the library that has the colors and the logos that you may want to use. So very similar to what we do in Photoshop. And so the way this works, we can edit most things here in After Effects. And then for editing the logos and the text and things, anything that's on the helmet, aside from the colors itself, we're going to use Photoshop. Our Photoshop file is basically one big smart object. Now it's got other smart objects inside it and we'll show you how to use that. Um, but basically when you change things in here and then you save it, it updates in After Effects. I'll show you that momentarily, but first I want to show you, let's set our background. So we're going to come down here and do the color. Now you can click here and then, you know, put in your color value or use the color picker here to choose your color. Um, you can also click this eyedropper tool and then come over here and choose your color. Or you can just directly use the eyedropper tool from there to choose your color. I'm going to go back to the orange. And now if we go to our other sizes, you'll see it renders that same color in all of them. So they're all connected. No matter what you do, it's going to show up in all the different ones. So let's go back here. Let's change our text. So if you want to change that text in the background, um, you can go into this hero text folder. You can turn it off if you want to. Um, I'm going to just make the color maybe just a tiny bit darker. And if you want to change the font, you can use this drop down here. You can choose uh, the style of the font. So if you want to do like an italic or a bold, you can do that in there. You can change the opacity of the font here with the slider. All right, we'll just go back. I think we had it at 95, something like that. To change the text, just click right here and then just change one line at a time. So I'm going to double click that to select it. I'm going to type tigers. Down here, I'll type football, and then I'm going to just click out. And when I do that, it's going to update. And again, you'll see it updates on all of them. Okay. So we're good with our background. We'll close that out. Now let's go and we'll work on the visor. So if you open this visor folder, you can turn visibility on or off. So if you don't want a visor, you can just turn it off. Okay. And then you can do things like edit the opacity of the visor, the density, and the lower you go on this, the, the sort of the thicker it gets, right? The less transparent it gets. You can turn the design visibility on and off. So if you don't want to have any text or logos on it, you can turn that on and off. And we can also edit those in Photoshop and we're going to get into that in just a moment. You can control the tint of the visor if you just want one color here, or you can use what we have turned on right now for sort of this rainbow effect. I just used the scroll wheel on my mouse, to, and if I scroll up, it zooms in a little bit. Or you can use this control here to set your zoom. I'm just going to zoom in on our visor. Now, if you turn off this dichroic glass, and that's how you kind of get to one color. So if you want to just do a one color and then change the, you know, how um, the, the opacity of the tint, you can do all that here. Uh, but I want to, I like this dichroic glass. So I'm just going to set this. So it's got four different colors and then you can change the angle to get whatever kind of look you want. I'm just going to stick with colors from our palette here. I'm going to just kind of alternate between uh, blue and orange. I meant to make this one blue. Make this one orange, make this one orange. And I like that. Uh, let's see if I change the angle. 
I think I'll just stick with that angle. Maybe bring this. Actually, that's not doing anything because I'm using this. So bring that down a little bit just to get back a little. There we go. I like that. A little bit more color to it. Now let's go into Photoshop and work on our text and logos. So if we've got this Photoshop file open, we've got here at the top, we've got this background grid, right? This gray part with all these labels to kind of tell you where everything is and how it affects the After Effects template in the helmet itself. We want to make sure we turn that off when we're done. We'll keep it on right now just so we can kind of see where we're going. And let's work on the visor. So we've got a folder for the visor. I'm going to turn on the visor color just so we can kind of see what we're doing. And I don't want any text on my visor, so I'm going to turn that off. And then I want to change my logos. So the logos are white. Can't really see them very well there. So if I turn on the background color, I can kind of see what I'm working with. I'm going to switch to the swoosh, turn off my background color, close that and hit yes to save because it's a smart object. And then we'll change the other logo to be the same. And then I want to save this to make it update in After Effects, but I don't want to save it with like all this stuff turned on, right? This is, is it'll take longer and I don't want this stuff when I go into After Effects. Um, so I'm going to turn off this background. I think we can still see what we're doing here. And for the visor, I'm going to turn off the color. I just want to keep my logos. Everything else I'll leave for now. We will eventually change it, but I just want to show you how this works. So I'm going to hit Control or Command S to save, and you'll see this saving up here. And this takes a little while, depending on how fast your computer is and just the processing power that you have and the size of the files that we're working with. There's a lot going on here, right? This is like one massive smart object that's linked to After Effects. So it takes a little while to save. Once it does, you go back to After Effects and you'll see down here this blue bar, right? It's, so it's, it's loading, it's rendering our changes. And there you see it. The text is removed from the visor and our logo has changed. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit and I'm going to just kind of pan over here somewhere to get my helmet to rotate around and you can see the logos change on that side as well so those changes that we're making in photoshop are directly changing what we see here in after effects i'm going to go back to the beginning just so we're kind of working with the same view as we go through this and let's start changing the rest of our of our stuff uh, so let's set all the colors of our helmet real quick so if we go into this colors folder we can we have all these different editable areas of the helmet so shell out that's the outer part of the shell let's make that orange and you're not going to see that reflect right away for for one reason it's it's still blue in photoshop and that blue in photoshop is again this is a placeholder right this this is just here to kind of show you where you're at on the helmet there's only one time when we would want to use Photoshop to set the color, and that is this cool little feature we built in um, called Sparkle Paint. So on this side of the helmet, I'll just give you an example. Um, if I turn on the Sparkle Paint, what I've got here is a smart object with a color fill inside, and in that color fill, or on that smart object, we've added a noise filter. So it kind of simulates sparkly paint. So if I save this real quick, just to give you an example, it's going to take again, just a little while for this to save because it is a lot that's going on to make the connection between what we're doing here and after effects. I appreciate you being patient. No, this is a little bit longer than what we normally do, but because this is our first after effects template, animated template, uh, there's a lot to show you and we hope this is really valuable to you. So if you go back to After Effects now, again, it's gonna load down here. You'll see it load. And now you can see that section of the helmet, because that's the only one I changed in Photoshop, has changed to kind of this sparkly silver color. Now, we don't wanna keep that for our purposes, but just to show you how that works. So I'm gonna go back to Photoshop and I'm gonna start making some changes. So I'm gonna turn off my sparkle paint. 
I'm gonna drag my logo in here onto my helmet. Get this placed and I'm gonna move it. Just get it up here on its own. And I'm just gonna line it up as close as I can with those stars. Those stars are good placeholders for you to help line up where your logo is. Now I've got this set in the library with, you know, it's it's two logos stitched together so that they're already spaced apart. Of course, if you have just one, you just line one up with the star, line one up with the other star, reverse it if you need or want to, right? That's totally fine. Um, so in this helmet left folder, I don't need that anymore. I'm gonna turn that off and I'm gonna turn off helmet right because I've got my logos placed. I don't want to save anything from here other than my logos, right? So I'm going to turn those off. I'm going to turn off the... I'm going to open the middle folder. I'll leave on the flag. I'm going to turn off the shapes because those are placeholders as well. And then for my stripes, I'm going to select my left stripe. I'm going to hold shift and select my right stripe and choose the white from my library. I'm going to hold the middle stripe or click the middle stripe and choose the blue from my library. And then I'm going to go into each of these different folders and just start changing all my other stuff. So my left strap text, I'll set that to blue. Set this one to blue as well. I'm just going to make this say tigers and I'm going to justify it so it's closer to the end of the strap. And then same thing here. Uh, that way and while I'm at it I'll just change the font on those I don't think it's gonna match my sample but I'm gonna use this sporty kind of classic varsity block font and you see with different fonts you might end up with kind of different positioning so you just move things around as needed I'm just gonna kind of move this up about there and then this one, I'll do the same, just kind of move it there. So I want it close to the end of the strap. I don't need those shapes, right? I don't want those shapes on when I save this. So I'm gonna turn those shapes off. Those are just placeholders so I know where I'm at. And then front pad, I'll change this to tigers as well. And if not already, set my font to blue and then I'll do that same block font, that sporty font. I'll turn off that front pad shape because again, that's just a placeholder. And then the back pad, same thing. Change this to tigers. No H in tigers. Change this to my blue. And I'll change the font here as well. And maybe, you know, you, maybe you want to make this a little bigger, right? I'm just holding alt and clicking and dragging out to make it a little bigger. I'm gonna turn off that back pad shape. And we do have a grid also down here. If you wanna you know, have some more precise lines that you can kind of line everything up to. Um, so this kind of, you can see how everything lays out here. Now I'm gonna turn this off. I'm gonna hit Control or Command S to save. And again, we're just gonna wait. A lot going on, so it's gonna take just a little bit for all this to load. And we did turn off a lot in the back, so that was good. Um, may go a little bit faster that way. Once it's done saving, we will go back to After Effects and see the updated changes. So let's go back, and now this will start to load. And if for some reason it doesn't, by the way, just kind of move your pan handle, and that usually will wake it up. And now what you can see is, all of our designs all around the helmet have updated and you can see the color that I set right underneath the helmet. So if you change the color now, you'll see it because we've turned off that light blue color that we had in Photoshop and we've turned on the ability to change the colors here. We've exposed it, right? There's nothing on top of it. So let's go through and set the rest of our colors and then we'll take a look at the helmet. So we've got a control here for the screws, these little screws that show up on the helmet. We'll just make those orange to match. The inside of the helmet should be pretty dark. So we'll just make it this dark blue. Front and back pads, that's these up here. The bumpers, we're just gonna leave those white. Face mask, let's go ahead and change that to this white color. I think, what was our sample? I lost our sample. Let's change the 
chin guard to orange. Let's make our face mask blue. Let's change the chin guards. Uh, we did that. Let's do the, the padding on the inside of the helmet. Let's just make that white. It's what it is in most cases. The strap clips are what we see here. We'll just make those orange as well. And then the face mask clips that we see here, we'll make those blue to match. So now we've got this nice orange helmet with some dark blue tigers on it. So now if we take our control and we pan around and you'll see when it's, when there's, this is already here, this is like buffered. You can move around in there pretty quickly. If you want to move to a further point, it takes a little bit of power for it to render. If you want to see like the other side of the helmet, you can rotate around here and then just give it a second to load. Now to make that a little bit faster, you can actually control the quality here. I've got it set to half. If you set it to full, it's going to be full resolution. Uh, and again, this is just a preview. This isn't you're going to be your final render output, but if you set it to full, um, it's going to take longer to render these previews. And if you go down right to like quarter, these things will render faster, but your quality, your preview quality is pretty low. Right? So it's just whatever you want to work with, uh, but we'll keep it at half for these purposes. So we've got our entire design done. So pretty quick, pretty easy, and it's it's fully animated loop. So if you go all the way to the end, you actually return back to your same starting position, and that allows us to loop this. So if you wanted to, once you export this, you can loop the video any number of times to create a repeating loop, and I'll show you how to do that once we're done. So that's how you use the Photoshop template uh, as a big smart object to help control everything that we're seeing here in After Effects. Really easy to do, hopefully, especially even if you've never used After Effects before. Um, we've tried to make this really easy for you and keep you comfortable with the Photoshop stuff that you're used to getting from us. So really, really easy to do and uh, really dynamic because you get this awesome, really great 3D helmet and you can rotate around and see all the different views that you want. Now, let's talk about how to export this. Actually, you know, before we talk about exporting, let's look at one more thing. Dynamic lighting, we gotta cover it. Dynamic lighting, you're used to it with sports templates, Photoshop templates. We've put it into After Effects for you for this one here. So all you gotta do is go up into this dynamic lighting folder, turn it on, and you'll see the light changes, right? The light shows up. And then you can just, you can just play with things. You can change the intensity, right? You just want a little, you want a lot. You can change angles, where light's coming from, right? All here on your X and Y axis. So you can play with this as much as you want to to get the look that you want to get, okay? So dynamic lighting also included and all of these changes that you make, it's all controlled simultaneously on the different layouts. So really, really cool. Okay, so now let's say you are done and you're ready to export. You're gonna need to make sure you have Adobe Media Encoder installed. That's the best way to export these. And depending on the power of your machine, um, exporting may take a little while. Um, it may not just depending um, one thing that helps though is to close other things down when you are going to render so like i'm gonna close photoshop now we've already got this video rendered out so i'm not gonna show you you know how long it takes to render um because that will take a really long time but i'm gonna close down a bunch of stuff just to show you how to queue it up so you should have Adobe Media Encoder installed. When you're all done with your design, just come up here to the composition, uh, composition dropdown and choose Add to Media Encoder Queue. So once you choose Add to Adobe Media Encoder Queue, it's gonna take a little bit for it to open up. So you see it's starting to open up here.
And this may take, you know, a few seconds, a minute or so to open up, depending again on the power of your machine. It's gonna open up and it's gonna look like this. And you just wanna give it a minute for the file that you are working on to pop up here into the actual queue. And there it is. So this is the file we're working with. And then there's a couple changes you may want to make. Um, depending on your machine and everything, you may want to check your settings for uh, exporting from After Effects through Media Encoder. Um, I want to make sure I have my this renderer turned on for me using my supported my GPU to support the render. If you click on this here, this is how you can change your settings for your render. Just give that a minute to load. It just takes a minute to kind of pull in all the information. And the only things that I do here is I turn on use maximum render quality. And you can see down here, it shows you the estimated file size. It's expecting this to export at about seven megabytes, right? And this is the, the square resolution, the 1K. So we've actually got this at 1100 pixels. I think I said 1080 earlier, it's 1100 pixels for this one. So I'm gonna hit okay. And then this is where you determine where you want it to save to. So right now mine's just exporting to my downloads folder. If you wanted to change that, you could just click there and save it wherever you want. You could change the name, right? So name this one, Tigers, and hit save. When all that's done and you're ready to go, you're just gonna hit this little play button and it's gonna start to render. And I'm not gonna let this finish because this will take longer than I want it to. Uh, but it'll kind of show you your elapsed time and your remaining time and it takes a little bit in the beginning for it to get going and then it'll it'll update every so often and uh, depending on again the power of your computer the time for this may vary so let's just pretend we're all done and this is all finished i'm going to show you how to create a loop so let's go to new composition and we'll just say 1100 by 1100 to match the size that we've already got. And then if you just go to wherever you saved your video, in this case I have it saved on the downloads folder, um, I'm just going to drag it in, drop a copy there, and then I'm going to zoom, I guess I can't zoom out anymore. I'm going to just duplicate this as many times as possible. So I'll put that all the way back to the beginning, and we'll drop another one in here. And I'm just gonna take one and put it right after the other. And so what you get when you do that is a continuous loop. See that? So because it starts and ends on the same frame, you can just put them right up against each other and create a continuous loop. So as many times as you may wanna loop it, you can just put one after the other after the other and just make it loop as many times as you want. And then you would just export this out the same way, right? You'd go up here, add it to your media encoder queue, export it out. This should export out a lot more quickly because you're just working with a couple smaller video files. You're not having to fully render out all of the animation coming from the original template. So when you go to export these, you can actually export multiple sizes at the same time and render them out in Adobe Media Encoder. So if you just want to export any one of them, you can do that just by selecting that one and then going up here to Composition and Add to Media Encoder Queue. But if you want to do more than one, if you want to do two or all three, you just select the ones that you want. So in this case, I'll select all. 
I'm gonna do composition, add to media encoder queue. And if you go to Adobe Media Encoder, you just have to wait a couple of moments for it to load up, but you'll start to see them all load in here into the render queue. And then you can change your settings and you can render them out and it'll save as three separate files. So you have three separate videos. You can see them loading in here. Now we've got HD, we've got square, and then story is going to follow. So you're able to render out multiple sizes at the same time. So that's it. Really cool, easy way to use Photoshop and After Effects together to create a 3D animated helmet mock-up and then export them out, loop it as many times as you want to. So, wow, I really hope you guys are as excited about this as I am. I think this is gonna take helmet mock-ups to like a whole new level. You're gonna be seeing this used everywhere. It's a really easy way to get into animating your designs and getting an introduction to After Effects if you haven't maybe already had one. So, super excited about this, guys. I hope you are too. Make sure you head over to sportstemplates.net, pick this up, and we will see you next time. Please don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons down below. And thanks so much for watching, guys.